Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We have a sequence of zero mean and independent random variables. SK is the sum from random variable X1 to random variable XK. We are interested in this event, which involves the maximum of the absolute value of SK, K from one to N. This is equal to the maximum of the absolute value of X1, the absolute value of X1 plus X2, the absolute value of X1 plus X2 plus X3, all the way to the absolute value of X1 to Xn. The event of interest is that this maximum exceeds epsilon, which is a strictly positive real number. We want to show that the probability of this event, the maximum exceeding epsilon, is upper bounded by the rth absolute moment of Sn, which is the sum from X1 to Xn, and r is a real number greater than or equal to 1. This moment is divided by epsilon to the power r. Let's define the events A0, A1 to An. A0 is the event that the absolute value of S1, the absolute value of S2, all the way to the absolute value of Sn are less than or equal to epsilon. Event A0 is the complement of the event of interest. Event A0 means that no one of those terms is strictly greater than epsilon. This probability is 1 minus the probability of event A0. Event A1 is the event that the absolute value of X1 is strictly greater than epsilon. Event A2 is defined as the event where the absolute value of X1 is less than or equal to epsilon, but the absolute value of X1 plus X2 is greater than epsilon. Event A3 is the event where the absolute value of X1 is less than or equal to epsilon. The absolute value of X1 plus X2 is less than or equal to epsilon, but the absolute value of X1 plus X2 plus X3 is strictly greater than epsilon. Generally, event AK, and this is for K between 1 and N, is the event that the absolute value of S1 to the absolute value of SK minus 1, all those absolute values are less than or equal to epsilon, but the absolute value of SK, which is the absolute value of X1 plus X2 all the way to XK, this absolute value exceeds epsilon. In other words, AK is the event that the threshold epsilon is exceeded for the first time by this quantity. Note that the event of interest is the union K from 1 to N of AK, because if the maximum exceeds epsilon, then the threshold is exceeded for the first time by the absolute value of S1 or the absolute value of S2 or the absolute value of S3 and so on. Those events are mutually exclusive. Let's define indicator AK to be one if AK is true, zero otherwise. Let's start by this expectation in the numerator of the upper bound, the expectation of the absolute value of SN raised to the power R. We can think of this expectation as the expectation of the absolute value to the power R multiplied by one, we can write down this one as summation k from 0 to n indicator a k. In the set of events a0, a1, all the way to a n, one and only one event is true and the others are false. One indicator is equal to one and the other indicators are equal to zero. And the sum of those indicators is exactly equal to one. We have a sum of non-negative terms. The sum is lower bounded by the sum without the term corresponding to k equal to zero. By the linearity of expectation, this is equal to summation k from 1 to n, the expected value of indicator a k, the absolute value of s n to the power r. Let's rewrite this expectation using the law of total expectation or the law of iterated expectations, the tower rule. The inner expectation is with respect to the random variables from x k plus 1 all the way to x n given x 1 to x k. This is the conditional expectation of the absolute value of Sn raised to the power r given the random variables from x1 to xk. Note that the indicator ak is written outside this expectation because the event ak depends only on the random variables from x1 to xk and is independent of the random variables xk plus 1 to xn. If we know the random variables from x1 to xk, we are certain whether event ak is true or false. If we have the random variables from x1 to xk, we need to compute the absolute value of x1, the absolute value of x1 plus x2, the absolute value of x1 all the way to xk minus 1, and finally the absolute value from x1 to xk. Event ak is true if this is less than or equal to epsilon, this is less than or equal to epsilon, that one is less than or equal to epsilon, but this one is strictly greater than epsilon. Otherwise, event ak is false. We don't need to know anything about the random variables from xk plus 1 to xn. By fixing the random variables from x1 to xk, this indicator is fixed and can be taken outside this conditional expectation. The product of this indicator and the conditional expectation 
is the argument of this outer expectation with respect to the random variables from x1 to xk. If we take the absolute value of a real number to the power r and r is greater than or equal to 1, we get a convex function. Because of this convexity, we can apply Jensen's inequality. Specifically, this inner conditional expectation is greater than or equal to the conditional expectation of Sn given the random variables from x1 to xk. Then we apply the convex function to this conditional expectation. We take the absolute value and raise it to the power r. Then we have this indicator and the outer expectation. After applying Jensen's inequality, let's see the situation that we have here. Sn is the sum x1 plus x2. Then we get xk plus xk plus 1 all the way to xn. Since we are conditioning on those random variables from x1 to xk, then these guys are treated as constants. Now, what is the conditional expectation of xk plus 1 given the random variables from x1 to xk? The problem statement says that this is a sequence of independent random variables. This means that the expectation of xj given the random variables from x1 to xk and given that j is in the set from k plus 1 to n, this expectation is the expectation of xj because xj is independent of those random variables. It is also given that those x random variables are zero mean, so this expectation is equal to zero. The conditional expectation applied to Sn is this summation here from x1 to xk. This is sk ball definition. The absolute value of this conditional expectation raised to the power r is the absolute value of sk raised to the power r. Here is the indicator. And then we have the outer expectation with respect to the random variables from x1 to xk. The absolute value of sk to the power r indicator ak is superior to epsilon to the power r times indicator ak. If event ak is false, we have 0 greater than or equal to 0, which is correct. If event ak is true, then the absolute value of sk is greater than epsilon. The absolute value of sk raised to the power r is strictly greater than epsilon to the power r which implies that the absolute value of sk raised to the power r is greater than or equal to epsilon to the power r. This inequality is true. Take the expectations of both sides with respect to the random variables from x1 to xk. When we take the expectation, this is a constant that can be taken outside the expectation and outside the sum. Now, the expectation of indicator ak is the probability of event ak. The indicator is a Bernoulli random variable, and this expectation is the probability that the indicator is 1 which means that the event is true. We have a lower bound on this expectation, which is epsilon to the power r, the sum k from 1 to n, the probability of ak. And this summation here is the probability of the union k from 1 to n ak. And this union is exactly the event of interest that the maximum of the absolute value of sk, k from 1 to n, exceeds epsilon. Dividing both sides by epsilon to the power r, we get the inequality of interest. We have a positive random variable x, and the random variable has a mean value, which is mu. The distribution is symmetrical about mu. The variance of random variable x is sigma squared. We want to prove that the expectation of 1 over x, assumed to be finite, is lower bounded by 1 over mu, 1 over the first moment of x, plus sigma squared, the variance, divided by the mean cubed. We can prove this inequality using the Taylor polynomial, but before doing this, Let's prove that the kth central moment of random variable x is equal to zero when k is odd. We can think of this expectation as the expectation of x minus mu to the power k multiplied by one. And this one is the sum of three indicators, x greater than zero and less than mu, x equal to mu, and x greater than mu and less than two mu. Note that if x is equal to mu, this is equal to zero. We can use the linearity of expectation to write down this expectation as this expectation with this indicator and that one with that indicator. According to the problem statement, the random variable x has a distribution that is symmetrical about its mean mu. This means that the random variable x is equal in distribution to the random variable 2 mu minus x. For instance, if the random variable x is an absolutely continuous random variable with a PDF, then the PDF is symmetrical about the vertical line x equal to mu, the value of the PDF at mu minus alpha is equal to the value at mu plus alpha. Because of this symmetry, we can change x in this expectation to 2 mu minus x. 
and the expectation is exactly the same because these two random variables have the same distribution. If we replace x by 2 mu minus x, we get 2 mu minus x minus mu, which is mu minus x, which is minus between brackets x minus mu. Raising this to the power k, we get minus 1 to the power k, x minus mu to the power k. In the indicator, if x is replaced by 2 mu minus x, we get the inequality mu less than 2 mu minus x less than 2 mu multiplied by minus 1. The inequalities are reversed and we get that minus 2 mu is less than x minus 2 mu is less than minus mu. Now add 2 mu to all sides. We get that 0 is less than x is less than mu. Now this indicator becomes exactly like this one. Also in both expectations, we have this x minus mu to the power k. We can combine the two expectations and we get this factor, 1 from here and minus 1 to the k from there. Note that this is 0 if k is odd. The kth central moment of this random variable when k is odd is equal to 0 due to the symmetry of its distribution about its mean mu. Let's write the Taylor polynomial for the function 1 over x. We do Taylor about mu and we go all the way to the fourth power. 1 over x is 1 over mu plus 1 and then we put here the first derivative of 1 over x evaluated at mu. Then we have x minus mu plus 1 over 2. We put here the second derivative of 1 over x evaluated at mu, and this is multiplied by x minus mu squared. Then we have 1 over 6, and we put here the third derivative of 1 over x evaluated at mu, and this is multiplied by x minus mu cubed. Finally, we have 1 over 24 and x minus mu to the power 4. This is multiplied by the fourth derivative of this function, 1 over x, evaluated at some zeta that is between x and mu. Now let's take the expectation of both sides with respect to the random variable x. On the left-hand side, we have the expectation of 1 over x. We get 1 over mu. Expectation of x minus mu is 0. When we apply expectation to this term, we get 1 over mu cubed times the expectation of x minus mu all squared. That's the variance of x, which is sigma squared. The expectation of x minus mu to the power 3, that's 0 by the above argument. And finally, we have the expectation applied to x minus mu to the power 4. This expectation is multiplied by the positive number 1 over theta to the power 5. This term here is non-negative, thereby indicating that the expectation of 1 over x is lower bounded by 1 over mu plus the variance divided by mu cubed. The third and last inequality that we have is expectation log x times expectation x over 1 plus x less than or equal to expectation x log x over 1 plus x. x is a positive random variable. Every expectation here is assumed to be finite. The key to proving this inequality is to note that these two functions of x log x and x over 1 plus x, both of them are monotonically increasing. We can show that if we have two monotonically increasing functions, then the expectation of g1 of x times g2 of x is greater than or equal to the expectation of g1 of x times the expectation of g2 of x. This is true for any general monotonically increasing functions g1 and g2. So we also have this inequality here, given that these two functions are monotonically increasing, something that can be checked by investigating their first derivatives with respect to x. Suppose that x is greater than or equal to y. Then g1 of x is greater than or equal to g1 of y. The difference is greater than or equal to 0. Similarly, because x is greater than or equal to y, g2 of x minus g2 of y is greater than or equal to 0. The product of two non-negative quantities is non-negative. If x is less than or equal to y, and because the functions g1 and g2 are increasing, then g1 of x minus g1 of y is less than or equal to 0. g2 of x minus g2 of y is less than or equal to 0. These two quantities are non-positive. Their product is non-negative. Regardless of the relation between x and y, it is always the case that g1 of x minus g1 of y times g2 of x minus g2 of y is greater than or equal to 0. Now, consider x and y to be two random variables that are independent and identically distributed. We multiply the brackets and then we apply expectations. Because of the linearity of expectation, we get this inequality here. Note that x and y are assumed to be independent random variables. This expectation is equal to the expectation of g1 of x times the expectation of g2 of y. This expectation is the expectation of g1 of y times the expectation of g2 of x. Because x and y are assumed to be identically distributed, 
then this expectation of G1 of Y, G2 of Y is exactly equal to the expectation of G1 of X, G2 of X. And the product of these two expectations is exactly equal to this product here, swapping X and Y as they are identically distributed. Our inequality becomes the two expectation G1 of X, G2 of Y minus two expectation G1 of X times expectation G2 of X. This quantity is non-negative. We can move this to the other side and divide both sides by two to get the inequality of interest. Indeed, for a positive random variable X, the expectation of X over one plus X log X. And since these two functions are increasing, this expectation is greater than or equal to the expectation of X over one plus X times the expectation of log X.